All right, so we now go to our second session of this uh, language modeling block with Andre Ehrman talking about unsupervised sense classification for word sketches. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Andre Ehrman and I'm doing a lot of, sorry. Uh, and I work at Lexical Computing here in Brno. So the talk is unsupervised sense classification for word sketches. It's a mouthful, but it's actually quite simple. Uh, what I want to do is to uh, show you a new feature we are developing to be present in Sketch Engine, which aims to enrich the word sketches, which are based purely on syntactic uh, language features with, uh, with additional information uh, which uh, describes the, the word sense the, the different collocations might have. So the structure will be the following. I will first introduce word sketches and how do they work so that I can then uh, tell you about the word sense induction methods we use and then how do we combine uh, these two into one, uh, one result. Uh, so first, just to recapitulate how a word sketch might like. Uh, here is the result for a word bank. The, the columns show different grammatical relations uh, which the collocates of the word bank can appear in. For example, you can have a central bank, investment bank, or a river bank. But at this point, we can't really distinguish between investment bank and river bank, but we would like to. Uh, so, how does uh, the word sketch work? Uh, uh, it extracts uh, frequent patterns from uh, the data uh, from the corpus text. It's based on a grammar, which is uh, written by a language expert. Uh, here I have an example of a rule which describes what a modifier of a word is. Uh, so the first uh, row is the name of the relation, and then there are two CQL queries. Uh, the interesting part in them are the numbers, which are the labels describing the position of the head word. Uh, is the, the one, and here. And the two is the collocate. So the first rule says something like, find me nouns uh, or adjectives, then may be followed by up to three adjectives or adverbs or commas, and then maybe up to two nouns, and then the head word. So if you evaluate uh, such a query on the corpus data, you will get uh, many results. Uh, uh, which describe uh, the collocates. So what do we do with this is uh, we collate the whole result and uh, order it by the collocation score so that uh, and store it so that it is uh, extracted uh, instantly when you need it. So it's very fast and uh, it has many nice properties. Uh, it is very easy to interpret and understand. You can always see what the basis for the decision was. You can see all the instances uh, of the collocates in the corpus and so on. Uh, so it is, if you need to base something on this, uh, this is very useful. Uh, but the drawback is that uh, the word sketches are purely based on syntax. So it's difficult to see any semantic information and that's what we want to deal with. Now, as an aside, what is a word sense? That's a difficult question. Uh, question, I can't really answer it. As a computer scientist, it's not of much interest to me because it's not something I can directly exp uh, inspect or describe. So, we look at this from a different perspective. 
which is described by the distributional hypothesis. Uh, so this allows us to switch from determining the word sense itself to some description or collation of the context of a word. And we can deduce the sense of the word itself. Uh, over the time, we tried many, many different uh, word sense induction methods. Uh, uh, the main aim for us was to find a method which we could use as a preprocessing step uh, in dictionary drafting, where we find the senses based uh, on corpus data. So the annotators or lexicographers do not need to, to read the whole corpus. And we just uh, show them uh, the, uh, the senses w uh, which they can edit in a fraction of time, which would be necessary otherwise. Uh, what we found is that simple solutions or traditional word sense induction algorithms do not seem to work well. Uh, while it's possible to understand the reasoning or see the word senses uh, as making some sense, it's usually, the structure is not usually what a human would expect or want uh, to be present in the dictionary. The senses are mostly technical and uh, pedantic, maybe, I would say. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, word says induction is uh, inherently very difficult and maybe we will never solve it completely until we are able to understand the text by a machine in full. So it's always just some approximation. Uh, what we settled on is the adaptive skip gram algorithm. Uh, after a lot of experimentation. Uh, it's described in this article, which is quite nice. Uh, the algorithm is based uh, on word embeddings, so the different senses are described by uh, a higher dimensional vector of uh, numbers. Uh, the implementation is quite simple and similar to, to fast text. And it's also as fast. Uh, we can process approximately a billion uh, tokens per hour. So this is a performance which is useful for even large real corpora, uh, as opposed to some transformer-based models, which we can't uh, really train in such a short time. Uh, so the model is trained on the whole text of the corpus, and then we store the model and we can query uh, the similar word similarity queries, and uh, we can also disambiguate the contexts, uh, the word senses based on the contexts present uh, in each corpus instance. Uh, so the ori original implementation was written in the Julia language, uh, which we found it difficult to use. So we rewrote the algorithm in Rust. Uh, I can recommend. And it's very performant and maintainable. Uh, and we can uh, make more modifications uh, to the algorithm. The drawback as always uh, is that the model is hard to interpret. Uh, we get just some point cloud in high dimensional space. So we can only see the secondary, uh, secondary features and not the reasoning of the algorithm itself. So here I have an example. Uh, these are the two things put together. So for the word mouse, uh, we found three senses. The first sense is mouse as a pest or an animal or a pet, something like that. Uh, 
the second sense is interesting because it's uh, a mouse as uh, an experimental subject. <laughs> so, for example, mice infected by mouse uh, exposed to Yes, it's basically some experimental medical research. And the last meaning is uh, the mouse as a computer accessory. Uh, here, as you can see, some of the sketches weren't clustered because uh, they are not specific to any one of these senses. So, how do we get from the model and the word sketch uh, to the annotations? Uh, we collect all the instances for uh, each colloque and we disambiguate it based on the model. So, this gives us a probability distribution over the word senses, which is then averaged over all the concordance lines. And the resulting sense uh, is assigned to the to the sense which was found by the algorithm with uh, the major uh, major certainty. Uh, so what can't be missing is some kind of evaluation. Uh, we created a test set for English words. The words are polysemous just some prototypical polysemous words. But they are, it's not really an easy problem because if you look at the, the words uh, more closely, then you will find many more senses which you definitely would want to have in a dictionary uh, or pull them out uh, from the others. Uh, not only the senses which you would uh, decide from the top of your head uh, based on the word. For example, the, the word bat is not only an animal or a club, uh, some striking tool, but it's presented the corpus as bat mitzvah, which is a Jewish tradition or a bat file which is a batch file for Windows, and many more. So on one hand, there are easy senses and there are uh, more difficult senses. So the granularity of the data set is definitely good and can get us very deep. Uh, so for these words, we collected the word sketches, the top 150 colloquettes and uh, we picked them uh, by the topmost score. And these, uh, these elements were then annotated by uh, five annotators. And the annotators could choose any new sense if they wanted, and they didn't need to annotate a sketch which uh, didn't have a, a clearly defined sense. So maybe 90% of the elements uh, are filled in. Uh, this is approximately 3,000 instances in total. Uh, we evaluate recall and precision. It's not the standard recall and precision. Uh, it's slightly modified because uh, the senses in the test set and the the senses in the result uh, are sets and not uh, elements itself. So recall is, uh, reco an element was recalled if it was found in the result of the word sense induction algorithm and it was present in the test set. Uh, so it's not the, the test, uh, the clusters uh, whole, but only their elements. Precision is the same thing, but uh, 
the complement. As always, we can trade the uh, precision for a recall during the training step by setting the single parameter of the adaptive skibbergram algorithm uh, it has. Uh, so we evaluated uh, this against the 500 uh, million token uh, corpus sample. And uh, the best we can do is approximately 70% F1 score. Uh, maybe the best model uh, we identified gives 77% recall, uh, which is already quite good. Uh, but we can get up to, I think, 88. But then the, uh, the precision suffers too much. Uh, what might be interesting is that uh, the dimensionality of the model doesn't have a strong influence on the result. I believe it is because the embeddings uh, do not need to encode the semantic information, uh, as is the case uh, uh, for standard fast text uh, embeddings, where there are mixed uh, multiple meanings for a single token. Uh, also, context size of 10 words to each side for the disambiguation step uh, is quite enough. Uh, okay, I have some more examples here if you want to look. And also, uh, the last link, you can play with it uh, yourself. We will keep it running for a couple of days. So please don't bring it down, but... <laughs> So crane is easy and gives a very nice result. So we have two senses, one for birds and one for, for the machines. As you can see, maybe, uh, almost all of the colocates were clustered except some uh, which are Uh, which are mostly functional and do not, uh, we do not really uh, want them to encode any specific sound. Yeah, this is also quite good. <laughs> So the first sentence is something related to, to royalty. The second thing is the literal stuff you put on your head. And the last result is uh, related uh, to dental stuff. No, no, uh, I have more and uh, <laughs> I can show you more examples or I have two slides to finish. Uh, okay, you can check this yourself. So uh, this is still some stuff we need to solve. Uh, there is some problems with the oh, sorry, granularity of the senses we get. For some words, so uh, we get too many senses, uh, and for other words, not enough. Uh, so, uh, one way we could solve it is uh, that we can induce many senses and then find a way how to mix them together in a second step. And we can uh, tune that by adjusting the parameters so that uh, the result fits well uh, to the word sketch result. Yeah. Also, we would need to deal properly with overlapping senses. Now only one sense is chosen as the best one. But in some uh, instances, one uh, collocation could be assigned to two senses and it still would make uh, good sense. 
And another thing is that the disambiguators uh, that were present on the top, uh, they are just uh, nearest neighbors in the word vector sense in the space. Uh, they are closest to the senses, but uh, not really distinct from the others. And that's it, basically. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? Thank you very much. It's very interesting. Um, I noticed lots of your examples are nouns with quite distinct concrete senses. How does your model perform on verbs or on more figurative senses, things that are less concrete? Uh, figurative senses for nouns, that works quite well, but verbs, that is difficult. We gave up uh, actually even on the annotation of the senses. The annotators didn't give proper sense classification. Maybe it's possible to, to fix that, maybe to change the sketch grammar or something like that. But at this point, it doesn't work too well for verbs. Who else? Any other question? Thanks a lot. Um, with regard to the problem of overlapping senses, could it be a solution to give the um, the insecurity the the sense ascribing algorithm has? just give this insecurity to the user, visualize it, for example, I don't know, by uh, a transparent bar, more transparent bar, if the algorithm is not so sure, and then do this for all the bars, and then, well, you show the user how secure your algorithm is, um, and you, at the same time, you, sh you, you could show overlapping senses. Yeah, definitely. I think so. I have the numbers as the output of the algorithm. Maybe I can put two bars uh, next to each other. Yeah, definitely. That's a good idea. Thank you. Any other question? If not, I have one. Well, I'm not an expert computational scientist or anything, but I did write a sketch grammar for Portuguese. <laughs> So um, I was just wondering, um, to what extent would this also work if we did not use the traditional sketch grammar with the positional, you know, post-tagged uh, CQL uh, grammar, but for instance, a parsing, parsed corpus? It should work just the same. It wouldn't maybe. make any, do you think that you could maybe incorporate the kind of information you get from the dependencies to help you with the disambiguation of senses? Uh, I don't think I can fit that directly onto the result that the parser gives. But I can annotate the output of the parser when it's done, I think. If you want to try that one day, yeah. let me know I can be your guinea pig and, <laughs> and try for yeah. Portuguese. Uh, we can put a result of a parser into Sketch Engine. Mm -hmm as word sketches. I know, I so know. So this is definitely possible to use it mm -hmm. on that. Nice. Ah. Yesterday, uh, there was a um, heated discussion about the uh, meaning of word cookie. <laughs> and uh, I just tried uh, using this link uh, cookie and uh, we're not getting this uh, uh, which actually in dictionary.com is shown as a second main uh, meaning as a uh, sweetie or, or, or just a close person to me, yes. And uh, for you, uh, Cookie also not showing here. And what, what would be uh, um, possible steps to uh, 
make more more find more examples from from texts yeah to expand this existing cor corpus to to get such example and get this sense what would be your your approach uh, i think this particular word uh, the problem is that it has too many senses and at the same time the result misses some so yeah, yeah it's not a problem of the corpus it's a problem of the the parameters of the the algorithm i believe yeah more research better tuning and then it will work the model itself uh, the word sense model has uh, many senses and uh, even obscure senses i wouldn't expect it to have but here it might not be shown because it's not in the word sketch to see it here you need to, to have it at the same time in the word sketch and in the, the embedding model so this is another point uh, it could fail i'm not sure if this answers the question if you don't mind maybe you can continue during after <laughs> and then we go to the next session so thank you so much <laughs>